Hey everyone, I'm Randy Journey, the host of Snack Break from Source. Every Monday through Thursday, we take 20 minutes to cover hot topics in commercial architecture and design, including new product releases, designer stories, industry leaders, and the impact of design. If you're tuning in live, know that you're automatically on mute, but you can use the chat feature to ask questions. You can also find a video recording on demand at tothesource.com or subscribe to the audio um, on Spotify podcasts or Apple podcasts by searching Source Snack Break. So today we are chatting with one of my favorite people, Rachel from Salvage Works, just down the street from me, one of our local makers. Hey, Rachel, how are you? Hi, Ren. I'm doing good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Hi, everybody. So before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about your background and what, um, how you came to found Salvage Works and the history of the company a little bit? Sure. So uh, I have about 25 years experience in construction, mostly in commercial construction, which is where I was for years and years in decorative metal for interiors, commercial build out interiors. Um, my brother, Preston, who has the company with me, he is um, a Finnish carpenter and a furniture builder by trade. And uh, so we were both always in the trades together. And uh, it so happened that our lives converged at the same time that the economy collapsed in 2010. Yeah. And he couldn't get a job as a Finnish carpenter to save his life. I had gotten laid off from my big fancy job <laughs> and we were both like okay. what do we do now <laughs> <laughs> right, this is it this is it so uh we started this company and uh i'm front of the house he's back of the house and that's what we've been doing for 10 years and it's been great awesome. it's been really great so tell us a little bit about salvage works what do you guys do um and how do you work and what is the story there sure so salvage works sells reclaimed wood from deconstructed houses and barns in the Pacific Northwest. So we are what I call hyper local. <laughs> yeah. Everything comes yeah. from Oregon and Washington. Um, and we uh, have a, a passion to preserve the history of the wood, which is really Oregon, Washington history, right? So when we have a structure that's coming down, we document it with photographs and we uh, try to find out as much information about the property, the landowners, what they did there, if it was a commercial property, uh, what were they making, if it was a ranch, what were they growing? Um, and we document all of that. Then we bring the material in and we kiln dry mm -hmm. it. Everything in our space is kiln dried and we're very unusual in that way. Most reclaimed places don't kiln dry their wood. But we do to make sure that there's no bugs, that there's no mold, the wood is stable to work with immediately, like you don't have to put a fan on it. And, um, and so, uh, and then we sell it to people who want to do things in their home, to contractors, to interior designers. Then we also have a custom wood shop where we build all kinds of uh, furniture for custom build outs. Awesome. So how does that process work when you find how do you find these structures do you like have a scouting truck that goes out and is like this looks good or like do you work with um property owners or like what does that process look like in terms of how you reclaim a structure that's coming down uh well in uh there are two formats right because there's house wood and there's barn mm -hmm. wood um barn wood always comes to us like they people who have structures that need to i'm sorry about that you guys <laughs> Please ignore that. When, when there are structures that need to come down, the owners almost always contact us and they say, hey, we've got this barn. Are you interested? Then we send out uh, usually Preston who scouts the barn mm -hmm. and make sure it's the right era, the right material, that it's actually salvageable because some of them, particularly in the cast, um, west of the Cascades, are collapsed. Oh, okay. Just, you know, too rotten, too far gone. Um, and then we work with a dismantler who takes it apart and we bring in the wood. Got it. For house wood, which we call furniture grade, we actually love house wood. In the city of Portland, particularly, there, and I'm sure anybody on this thread who's a, a architect or a contractor or a designer knows about this, but there's this deconstruction ordinance that the city of Portland passed in 2016 and then updated in 2018 that requires houses built before a certain year. So right now it's 1940. Mm -hmm. The house was built before 1940 
it must be deconstructed for reuse. Oh, okay. And so that wood we get from certified deconstructionists in the city. Got it. And what would make a house from 1940 have a different type of, or like what makes that wood different or what would make it furniture grade? Why do you really love it? Great. Uh, great question and super fun. If you're a wood geek, <laughs> we all are. Somewhere. We all are. That's why we're here. <laughs> so when, uh, so like when they were building a barn, chances are good. They milled that wood right there on it's the property. It's what they had. It's what they mm -hmm. had. And they didn't spend time thinking about if it was, you what know, high was quality like. or whatever. Yeah. That was just like, build the thing, <laughs> shelter the animals. But in the city and when they were had, uh, mills that were production mills, they graded the wood at the mill. Mm -hmm. And so the highest grade wood was used as framing material for houses and commercial structures. So that wood is in fact the highest quality of the old growth that they were um, cutting down and lum you know milling from about the turn of the century to the 40s, 50s, right around that time period, they're starting to cut second growth, third growth, and then the quality of the wood goes, down. goes way down. So this is like the primo stuff. It's this is the kind of stuff you, you is not cut anywhere anymore ever. Yeah. And in yeah. fact, it might also never be grown again. That's amazing. And it's just in our yeah. homes. I love that. Yeah, it's in your house. If your house was built before 1940. Start looking around. Start, yeah, you have some pretty good material. That's in there. great. So let's talk about your new product, the Wow Wall Cladding, which is shown behind you. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about this product. How did you guys develop it? What is it made out of? How designers can work with it? All the good stuff. Okay. Well, how it got developed is also a goofball story, just like everything Preston and I do starts with a an opportunity, right? So if you're in the reclaim business, you're an opportunist by nature. So Preston and I are opportunists. He came to me early on in our business and said, hey, there's all this wood down on Front Avenue mm -hmm. in Portland, down on Front Avenue. He's like, if we go pick it up, it's free. And I was like, okay, sign me up. <laughs> right? okay, my up. Wood. Yeah. <laughs> so it was this crazy material. It was two by six tongue and groove. And there was thousands of feet of it so we bring back all this material and we can't sell all that as two by six tongue and groove and i was like wait a minute i'm not sure this was a good idea after all and then preston came back the next day and he's like what if we cut it up and that's where we started so at the very first wow wall we made was called the front avenue blend or whatever yeah. we called it i don't remember yeah. of course all that material is long 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 gone but that's how we started and from there, we developed three lines of consistent material now that are excellent in wall cladding, accent walls, but it's also used in like small formats like you have right there. I see that picture of the, um, the island bar. And in commercial build outs, what we're seeing in a lot is, is wrapping the reception mm -hmm. desk or behind the reception area or where people might want to mount their logo right behind the reception desk. Also in hotels or other hospitality restaurants and stuff, it's, it's great. It's good to absorb sound. Right. And so, and it provides warmth. Mm -hmm. If you're needing a, if you have a really super contemporary design, but you want to just add a hint of warmth, this is a great option. So um, the three blends that we have, Tell me if I'm getting too nitty-gritty. No, I was going to just say, what are the three that it comes in? <laughs> okay. So the first we call our urban landscape, and it's our most popular. It's a redwood and cedar blend. Um, it has a lot of gray tones. So when gray was the hot color, what was that, two years it's ago? It's always hot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it, this was, but it's maintained its popularity. It's definitely our most popular seller. Um it's got cooler tones, right? It still has warmth, but it's it's gray. And the reason it's gray is cedar weathers right. gray, and so does redwood. So different species weather differently. Mm -hmm. So our barnwood blend is a mix of 
uh, anything that was from a barn, barn siding. We throw it all together after we've selected out the pieces for other projects and put it all together to make a blend. And because it is blended, it has fir, it has ponderosa pine, uh, it has hemlock, um, other native species that might have been thrown in. And it tends to have the variation in tones of amber, orange, yellow, uh, pine on the east side of the Cascades, if it's facing a certain direction, will actually patina to a blackened color, which is kind of awesome. Yeah. So if you see above in that picture there, you see that black stripe across, that's a piece of blackened um, pine from Central Oregon. Wow. So that's the barnwood blend. It's, uh, it has a rougher texture because it has been weathered. Then our final blend is the Craftsman blend, which is from Portland Craftsman era houses. Awesome. It is smooth to the touch, which makes it great for high traffic areas. It is a very consistent color in the amber tones, honey, amber, that kind of thing. Like think of your favorite winter beer and, uh, um, often people use that in areas that are, you know, restaurants, uh, bar facing where, you know, you might sit and put your purse. Mm -hmm. That's a smooth area. So got it. Okay. Those are our three blends. I love it. And so can you talk a little bit about like, you get all this material, do you mill it in house? Do you like, what does that process look like? And how do you, as a reclaimed business, like develop products to have a consistent look. So the designers know that if they specify something in their product project now, and it gets built in two years, that product will still be there. Like, how does that work when yeah. you're working with reclaimed wood? Well, that is exactly right. Which is why this, these three things that we are offered talking about today are the only <laughs> things that I can guarantee any designer that will have in two years. Got it. Everything else, forget yeah. it. Come talk to us when the project is happening. But these three. So um, the consistency comes from the source. Yeah. Just like your web. <laughs> so, for example, uh, the Craftsman blend that is smooth, that comes from Craftsman style houses in Portland. The milling process for that wood at that time period when those houses were built was incredibly consistent with that smoothing out of the wood. Before that, before that time period, they had they they cut it rough, yeah. and the wood is really highly textured and splintery. Mm -hmm. But that designation in those two time periods, we didn't create that. That just exists. Awesome, right? So that's how we. And then the barnwood blend again, because it's a blend and a variation, it will consistently be a blend and a variation. And that's what designers would be specifying it for. And if that's what they were going for, right? And then this picture you see right here with the dining table that we made and behind that, that's the urban landscape and the consistent gray tones. And again, because cedar and redwood patina to a gray tone, it's always going to be like that. Got it. But I will also say, ask, you know, you asked about the process. Every single stick of wood gets looked at by a human, more than one person. <laughs> and uh, we do what's called side select. So we're like, is this the side that we want showing or is this the side that we want showing? And when we do that, we put it in the pile, like this side up and that way. So every single board, every single one gets a, a side select. Awesome. And so when it comes to, a, to the site, is it mounted on something? Like how is it installed? Right. It comes in bundles. Okay. It's not mounted in panels. So it comes in bundles. It's, it, it's each bundle has got six pieces so that you know it's not too heavy mm -hmm. to manage them and they come in random lengths they're all trimmed and bundled and super tight packages so you can get a brick of it like on a pallet if you're doing a big project or you can get a small unit um and it's in uh six inch increments starting at 18 inches and so that uh if you look at that picture you'll see there's a patchwork of fitting it together mm -hmm. um that gives it a nice pattern um However, if you were specifying something for a small area and you only wanted eight foot boards, you can do that awesome. too and have it be uh, just one with no uh, horizontal seam, no vertical seams, no vertical yeah. seams. Yeah. So if a designer is specifying this, they need to let the contractor know that they'll be putting stuff up individually. Into sort of, yeah. Okay. Got it. 
Right. So on our spec sheets, which are on your website, and I will be updating them soon with our new information we haven't had a chance to talk about yet, but um, it does give a little installation instructions. Got it. Okay. And so um, let's talk out of just mild curiosity, these craftsman homes that you're talking about, are those like Sears and Roebuck, like kit houses, or are they like made here? This is an individual um, made mostly made mostly made here oh, interesting. because we had more wood here than they had back there interesting so people were just doing their thing here yeah. they were like we don't need a kit <laughs> Got it. okay so where do you see designers using this most often are there any places it should not go should they consider moisture like what are the things that they should keep in mind when working with a natural product but one that is reclaimed sure uh, this is not an exterior application <laughs> so as cool as it looks as awesome as you think it might be no it won't hold up this is an interior application only and only one of our blends can you use in the powder room or the bathroom which people do mm -hmm. i mean that's fine it's the uh, urban landscape which is the cedar redwood mix Got it. so uh the other thing is it doesn't it doesn't require finishing like it doesn't have to have a polyurethane over it to protect it because it's already done its thing yeah you know it's already turned the color it's going to turn so uh it saves an extra step it's there's no maintenance if you put a nail in it because you want to hang a piece of art and then you're like whoops it's two two inches to the left so what it already has some nail holes in it chances are good no no one will know and you don't have to spackle the paint yeah that's great how thick are these panels half, half inch. inch okay so they're pretty you could put them over anything and off you go it's pretty light it's half inch thick it comes in two widths either three and a quarter or five inch depending on the look you're going for and sometimes people mix mm -hmm like one third, one third, one third of the three different blends and sometimes half of this size and half of this size. It really depends on the designer's vision. Got it. Well, it sounds like it's sort of easily customizable a little bit. Yeah. 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 And then also if they ask, if people ask us to build a panel with a pattern in it, we certainly can do oh, that. Awesome. So designers should definitely reach out. Um, yeah. Let's also talk about the other cool stuff that you guys have going. I know you have an exciting announcement about the wall, wow wall. So let's get to that. And then can you tell us a little bit about what others, how other ways you work with designers? Sure, sure. So the exciting mm -hmm. announcement is one sentence long. We are FSC certified Yay! now. Hey, that's awesome. That's not just one sentence. That's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, Andrew, for saying yeah. So, um, if that matters to you, your client, uh, the certification of the building, then at least now we've got that and you can use it with that confidence. That's great. And so what other things, um, how else do you work with designers? I see some pretty cool stuff on the slide here. Yeah, right. Those are two really cool projects. So um, we have a custom wood shop and we are custom. We have, we have, we have like six tables that we build all the time, but if you dream up something awesome and we're, we have the tooling to build it, we can build it. Um, for example, those blue pine checkerboard things that you're seeing there on the right of your screen, those were built for the state of Oregon library in Salem and designed by an interior designer. She had this vision for this look and she helped us select the material. We drew it up. She approved it, we built it, and we made eight of them like that. Um, the big beam on the left was super cool also. That beam was salvaged from the site where this project is. Sometimes, you know, you might take down part of the building and remodel, and if you if you secure something from that space, then we can build something from it. And that bench was a ginormous beam that came out of the remodel of that building. That's awesome, because that was going to be my next question. If a designer has a client that has a particular tree or a piece of a structure that they want to do something fun with that they can work with you yeah. on that absolutely um the hard part is the tree if the tree is standing <laughs> it's going to be like three years before we can do anything with it i mean wood has to dry you know it's like an organic process yeah. and um so i i don't encourage that part mm -hmm. because that just ends up being heartache for everybody <laughs> but if the tree is down and cut up already then we can talk awesome 
That's awesome. Okay. So designers, the good news is you can get samples of this um, on our website right this second. Um, for those of you who are on the podcast, the link to this um, is in the show notes. So be sure to check that out. Designers, if you have any questions, feel free to chat them in now. You can tell Rachel is an amazing resource. The his I love that you are basically a historian in no I try to be. Like, but that's a really important part of your process, it sounds like. And I find mm, yeah, it is very fascinating because it is reclaimed material, especially wood has a story. And mm -hmm. learning what that is, I find really delightful. Um, so yeah, and then designers, if you would like to register for another uh, snack break, you can smash that register now button or head to to the source.com. We've got a whole slew of great snack breaks heading your way for next week. So hopefully we'll see you again soon. In the meantime, Rachel, this was amazing. I'm I learned so much oh, about thanks. structures in in Portland that I did not know. And so I'm really excited to look around houses as I go for walks these days. And who's got the good wood, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You look for that. I will. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate you coming. And it's nice to see some names I recognize. Hi, Camille. We're so excited. Thanks for coming. All right. We'll talk to you later, Rachel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan. It was really nice to be yeah, here. Yeah. We'll see you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.